So t the purpose of tonight's uh, briefing is to let you know the specific details about what's going to be happening in Seattle. And uh, joining me is uh, Michael Campbell, our regional director. He'll be uh, jumping in uh, now and then to uh, make sure that we've got uh, all of the details right. And I'm hoping, if I scroll down the list here, there's a lot of people on this one. I'm looking for, uh, oh, he's not here yet. I'm hoping that Darren G is going to be joining us um, a little bit later. He's our lead robot inspector. Um, okay, so <clears throat> with that, um, I'll just go over really quickly um, how this webinar system works. Apparently, it starts out by hanging. Oh, there we go. All right. So uh, by default, everybody is going to be muted tonight. If you have any questions, you can uh, raise your hand. There's a little raise your hand button. Hopefully, you can figure that out. And or you can go ahead and uh, um, you can go ahead and type a, a question in the box. And I'm going to unmute Darren. Actually, I'm going to make Darren a panelist. I can do that. There we go. Hi, Darren. Oh, I'm going to unmute you. I think I'm going to unmute you. You there, Darren? Yep. Okay, there we go. So I'll let you mute yourself. All right. Um, so, uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. If you have sat through this presentation before, I promise I'm going to get all of the uh, Seattle-specific things done first, um, and I will not be offended in the slightest if you decide to leave after we get uh, that part of it done. If you are new to all of this, uh, we'll be going through uh, a lot more detail for you. So the event-specific information, we're going to talk, talk about parking, buses, food, load-in, load-out, where to go, all those sorts of things. Um, at that point, uh, we'll walk through the event. If you've been to Ellensburg, or it, it's, I'm going to walk you through a first event. Um, and so that, that'll be great if you are completely new to this. So first thing we'll get started with tonight, then, is how to arrive at CenturyLink. Um, our event is in the CenturyLink Field Event Center, um, which is located in downtown Seattle. It's at 800 Occidental, or it's basically this big building right over here in the middle um, across the street from Safeco Field. It's in between the two stadiums. Um, to get there um, is... Uh, if you're coming from I-90, there's an exit right off of, of I-90 to get there. Um, I'm going to assume that you'll be able to handle that part. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, your first arrival is going to be on Wednesday night. And uh, uh, the directions for loading in this year are different from previous years. So if you've done this before, you might want to pay attention to this part. Um, we don't have access to the north lot this year. And what that means is that um, you have to uh, come in the south end of the facility. And so you're going to approach a parking garage from First Avenue South and turn right in between the two, uh, between Safeco and CenturyLink. And the garage entrance is in between there. Um, in bad cartoon form, you're going to get off of the I-90 exit, take Ed Edgar Martinez Drive down to First Avenue, Take a right uh, on First Avenue, take a right on Royal Brome, and uh, you'll be entering the parking garage on the lower level. If you've never been down there, this is sort of what it looks like in picture form. Um, so this is Safeco over here on the right-hand side. You can see it. And uh, CenturyLink is on the left. What we need you to do is to go down this little service road uh, on the right side of the ramp. So when you come in... Um, uh, stay to the right. You're likely to run into a line of cars. There usually is one on Wednesday night. And uh, you're going to go down, and you can actually, it circles around. I didn't know how to get PowerPoint to do circles, but there's a little circular turn down here, and then uh, you'll end up taking a right into the garage. Um, hopefully that makes sense to everybody, um, and um, it should be actually pretty straightforward. Uh, when you enter the building, just follow the directions from the load-in crew, and we will... Uh, get you unloaded and uh, put into the right place as soon as we can. Um, hang on one second.
Sorry about that. Uh, Michael is having problems getting logged in. So, um, uh, all right, next slide. Um, so parking, uh, parking is not free. Um, First has no, uh, nothing to do with the parking. So we, uh, uh, we all have to park just like you do. Um, the parking area is run by private companies. Um, so you can park anywhere you would like um, and pay for it. <laughs> we highly recommend the CenturyLink Field Garage. It seems to be the best deal. If you're coming for just one day, it, um, it's 12 bucks. If you're going to be there uh, for multiple days um, and you would like to be able to come and go, it's $36 for a three-day pass. And the nice thing is that allows you to come and go as you will. And you can also uh, park overnight if you need to. And so we can, um, uh, uh, but keep in mind that the garage is not secure at night, as in they don't like closed gates and stuff. So it is sort of open to the, uh, to the nice folks that live down in that area. So I wouldn't leave anything too valuable. I don't know if anybody's ever had anything broken into down there, but um, there, there you go. Um, there will be additional staff this year. Um, the additional staff, uh, if you were came last year, the, the, they only had one person trying to take money from all of the cars. Uh, they apologized for that, and they are going to do a much better job of that uh, this year. So um, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, will you give us a PowerPoint so that we can have the directions and pictures? Yes, I will show that to you in just a second. Um, and uh, Keith Horn has asked, in the past we could park in the north lot for free. Can we still do this to help our team unload? No, um, I I don't think so. Um, they uh, the north lot is currently under construction is why we can't use it. They're putting in a big building up there, and um, there was some other reason that we were unable to use the north lot. Um, if you're coming in, um, yeah. It's, so try not to bring too much stuff with you. You know, if you were to bring two vehicles in, nobody's gonna like give you too much of a hassle, Kev, Keith. But, um, and remember, team unload is just for a few minutes anyway. So I'm sure if you uh, ended up caravanning a couple of vehicles in, it won't be that big a deal. I say that, I'm thinking like a couple of vehicles, don't bring five. Um, we don't have that much room. Make sense? I hope so. Okay. <clears throat> um, other days for parking, um, aside from load in, it, um, you need to get to the, you, you'll end up going up the ramp this time. You can see the ramp here and uh, hanging a left in, into the parking garage. Um, so um, you can also come from the east side here and turn in. Um, we'll let you find your own way there. Um, and again, we have no involvement whatsoever with parking. Uh, I'm not really interested in hearing your parking woes. I, I, it's as gracious and professional as I can put it. There's nothing I can do about it. You'll, you'll have to work that out. So, um, yeah, it's, we're in the same boat you are, okay? Let's talk about bus transportation. If you are bringing buses, um, buses should do the same approach that, that we showed you earlier um, coming in. Um, but this time we want you to turn. I'm going to flip back to this picture. Um, so you turn... Uh, Edgar, Martin, Edgar Martinez Way, right onto First, right onto Royal Brougham Way, and then take a left, and this is Occidental, um, and you can, um, the buses can pull up, drop their students off right in front here. This is not bus parking. However, they, they're, um, they're welcome. That's probably the best place to drop um, the buses off. Um, this year, we do have bus parking available. Um, and it's going to be at Safeco Field. Let me go back to, where was that? Here we go. Um, bus parking is $30 a day on Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday if you need it. Um, you need to call Malcolm uh, Rogel, I think is his name, of the Seattle Mariners, and um, they will make those arrangements for you. Um, and uh, I think uh, we thank them uh, mightily for uh, helping us out with that. Okay. I'm looking for Michael in the list. I lost Michael. Um, he, might, he might come back. Okay. Is there free Wi-Fi at the regional event? No, there is not. Um, the, uh, um, 
I don't believe there, well, there may be paid Wi-Fi, but there is not free Wi-Fi. Um, you, you, you would be embarrassed to know how much they charge us for internet access. <laughs> it would, it would floor you. So, uh, yeah, no, not, nothing is for free. I, um, logistics for food. The concessions will be open Thursday through Saturday. There's a, uh, um, there's a, uh, it's standard concession stuff. Um, uh, box lunches are also available, um, and I'll, I'll get to more of that in a minute. Um, this is a, a, a contracted place, so you can't bring food into the building, um, but you can buy box lunches from the venue that can be eaten indoors. Um, we also have, if you want to go a little cheaper than that, we have box lunches from Gretchen's, which is an outside vendor, um, but you can't eat those indoors. Um, you can eat in, in or near your vehicle or, or outside. We're hoping for really nice weather. Hopefully that will work out for you. Um, we believe that you may bring a reusable water bottle. And um, so uh, don't go all legal and attorney on me on what constitutes a reusable water bottle. Um, if you're, <laughs> you're not supposed to bring in uh, bottled water. Yes, I know you could, in theory, reuse those bottles, but um, they will uh, they will call you. We don't actually inspect any of that stuff, but the house runs that department, and so uh, they may make you take all your water away, okay? Um, please no eating food in the pit. Um, the coefficient of friction between a upside down piece of pizza and concrete is nearly zero, and it's very, very slippery, so um, please no upside down pepperoni in the room. Uh, and also clean up after yourself. You know, we're, we're uh, get, there's going to be you know, 64 teams, you figure it's going to be somewhere around 2,000 people um, in the pits at, at various times, and uh, it can turn into a real pigsty if, if you don't. So we appreciate your help there. Um, all right. Um, box lunches, there are two of them. Uh, Gretchen's is also known as Schwartz Brothers, um, and they are uh, offering box lunches for five bucks. Um, and a breakfast thing for seven bucks. Um, we have nothing to do with this. So um, <laughs> um, we're merely conveyors of this information to you. Um, there, all of the contact information and the menu stuff that we're aware of is right here. There is a, a phone number for you to call and you can talk to them and find out. I, we do know that you have to order by uh, March 27th. Um, so you got about a week or so. Um, the um, um, I'm going to, the uh, other availability of box lunches is from something called Seattle Sports Surface, and they are with CenturyLink Field. The box lunches are $9 each. They can be eaten inside. Um, you can see there's the little menu for you. Um, they haven't given us the order form yet. They promised to give it to us by Wednesday morning. So uh, let me... Uh, uh, defer you, I'll, I'll show you where uh, all of the notes from this, um, from this area are. Okay, I got a couple of quick questions here. Um, um, is there a parking lot where we can park trucks and trailers on Saturday for loadout? Um, will we need to use the bus parking at, lot at Safeco? Um, last year, a few people actually had decent enough luck to um, a few people uh, had decent enough luck to uh, be able to uh, uh, just pull into the parking garage, and I, th I don't know whether they had to pay twice or not. I'm, I'm not sure for two spots or not. The north lot, I don't know if it'll be available or not. Um, you could try stopping by on Saturday. It is open. Um, if, there's, if traffic's light, you may be able to talk them into allowing you to park your trailer in the north lot. Um, they, they generally didn't really... Uh, give us a very good feeling for whether the north lot was available or not. We kind of got the impression that it, that it is not. Okay, um, that that I hopefully that is answering. Uh, there are four or five people ask that same question. Uh, Jacob, I hopefully you just saw the the Gretchen's due date was March twenty seventh. Um, Century Sports Service is going to be, um, I believe, probably the same day. I, they didn't actually give us that info. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and again, when, um, the inspectors and uh, our key volunteers will be handling um, the load-in part 
Um, so you, you can uh, uh, just follow the directions. We have a plan to get you in and out of the building in an efficient way. Um, a couple of other uh, things uh, that are very event specific. Um, we're, we're really excited this year, by the way. Um, if you've never been in uh, CenturyLink Field Event Center with the, um, it, with the WAMU Theater set up, um, it's, it's really a cool space. And this is, be, this is quite a bit different than what we had last year. In case you also aren't aware, we're down to one field in Seattle. It'll be 64 teams. Um, so we're actually pretty excited if um, uh, we're pretty excited to be able to use this new space. Um, in order to do that, and, and I, hang on one sec, there it is. So this is, uh, this is, whoop, this is kind of what the layout looks like this year, I'm trying to get it to look reasonable. Um, so um, there's this large theater space, and um, it, there's sound curtains all the way around. So it's really actually a very, this is really a fabulous space for us to be in. Uh, the field will be in the center. We'll have bleachers on two sides with the main bleachers up here. Um, the pits are going to be behind the sound curtain and, um, and sort of in what they, they kind of call it the WAMU Theater Lobby. Um, and so we have a, a nice pit set up for you out here. Um, there'll be, there's some auxiliary areas, uh, the, the practice field and robot inspection will all be in this area back here. Um, and then we have uh, some public displays running. And we also have the Microsoft Lounge. Uh, they're one of our sponsors again this year. We really appreciate that. Um, I believe the DaVinci robots are back, and we'll have sponsorships, sponsors and, uh, and scholarship road where the kids can come talk to college recruiters. And then PID admin will be here in the middle, machine shop outside. And if you remember last year, or um, this is the East Hall. This is where you'll be doing all the load-in stuff, okay? So I've shown you this, and I'm going to zoom in on part of it because um, we're trying to address a... Uh, ongoing complaint, <laughs> the ongoing complaint is um, about um, trying to balance the need for the students to be able to have fun and stand up and cheer and the audience behind them. So um, there's a second thing that we have to do, deal with, which is uh, entering and exiting the, uh, uh, the arena. And so um, we have a designated cheering section. We'd appreciate it very, very much if you could use it. Um, we are um, going to have to uh, keep the other walkways clear. Um, so um, what we've done is we've set up in front of the field, um, and it turned. And, and I, I thank everybody for their opinions. We've done a great deal of thinking about this. Yes, this is the correct place to put the cheering section. It will be dead center of the field. It's about 25, 30 feet long or about 25 feet long, I'm sorry, and it'll have, um, it's about six or eight feet deep, which should be plenty. Um, everywhere else along here, we have to keep these aisleways clear. The fire marshal is mandating that um, because they, well, that's what fire marshals do. So um, uh, we will kind of shoo you away from these areas. And that's fair enough because that, that gives the people that are sitting uh, the ability to see it still gives the teams who want to come up and cheer their own team on uh, a nice place to go and do the mosh pit right up there. Um, so we'd appreciate it if you would forewarn your students that um, if they are lingering out here, they may get asked to go sit down. Um, that's uh, the fire marshal and uh, the facility are, are, and the audience would very, very much appreciate your cooperation on that. Okay. Um, so uh, 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 Robert's asked an awesome question, um, and I, I've thought of that, Robert, and two slides, I promise. Um, okay, so in the morning, um, when, you're, when you're waiting for the pits to open, there are two places, um, uh, there are two places to be. Um, one of them is, this is the, uh, the, uh, the parking garage, and this balcony, I guess, this leads into the main entrance uh, on the second floor. So if you're coming down from, from your cars, you'll end up queuing up here, or if it's raining, you'll probably want to stay uh, in, under the cover. If you're unloading from Occidental, um, you'll be on this side of the building, and there is a covered area back here. Um, and if I go back to my layout, um, 
the main entrance will be through these doors. We won't be opening these doors. They will be there for fire exits only. Um, so the, the, the main door in is going to be uh, this set of doors down here. So if you're looking for somewhere to line up, um, uh, this is the main entrance. If you th thought you were first in line over here, that's not you. It will be this, these doors down here. Okay? Um, all right. Let's talk about some special circumstances we com have coming up. And we're going to do this in two phases. I want to make sure that everybody is aware of section 4.14 and it's the bleacher rules in the administrative manual and it's and it has to do with um, with your team trying to save large blocks of seats we are unable to allow you to do that this year and um, so please don't I uh, I know that there are so, some teams who have a, uh, a, a a long history of of rushing into the bleachers uh, staking out you know 10 by 10 rows by you know 30 seats wide and and trying to hang on to them we're not going to allow you to do that this year so uh, don't gripe and grumble to us we will uh, stop you from doing that because on Friday morning we have at least a thousand students uh, if not 1400 it's some, we're not sure of the exact number we have a lot of students coming to visit on Friday morning we have the entire student body of aviation high school evergreen tech um, and two or three other um, schools that are coming. So we, uh, we are going to uh, come up with a large block of seats for those students. We will seat them after opening ceremonies. And uh, we really appreciate your help in, uh, in being gracious and professional about this. Uh, but we are, um, you know, for security reasons, the schools would like to have their uh, their students in one section so they can keep track of them all. Okay, um, and we um, so uh, on Friday morning we will um, we will let you know ahead of time where we're going to block the seats off. You're welcome to sit there during a war opening ceremonies, but be forewarned we we're going to ask you to uh, to move to another section um, once opening ceremonies over. Okay, belabored enough. Um, uh, so. Um, and I've got a, several other great questions that have come up, and we'll be going. We'll be hitting those here pretty soon. Um, this is all of the event specific for for this event. Um, this is the specific part. Um, can I answer any questions regarding just the specifics of Seattle? Um, if you would like to know about, um, um, if you would like to know about. Uh, what's going to happen during the day, uh, stay tuned. We'll be getting to that in, in just a sec. Um, Larry has asked about, is there a place to take photos and videos? Uh, no. Well, um, we, have a, we have a way of dealing with that, Larry. Um, we're probably going to do media passes uh, for, for the teams. Uh, I will have details for you a little bit later. Um, the, the machine shop will be available. Um, and they will have a welder, and uh, so you'll need to talk to the machine shop people uh, when you show up on Thursday. Okay, um, uh, John, you've asked a very good question. I, you, I'm going to get into that in just a sec about what what you can and can't do on Wednesday. Um, and everybody else, uh, all of your questions are actually going to get answered. Uh, Jody, yes, the concession should be open relatively late on Thursday. I think they're going to be up until like 7. Okay. Um, everybody else's questions, I promise I have slides for them. All right? The grand overview of the event. On Wednesday, um, you're going to be, do, we're doing robot and pit area deliveries. I'll get into what that means in just a sec. Thursday is entirely about uh, inspections, passing inspection. It is your number one only job on Thursday is to get yourself to pass inspection. Yeah, we know better than that, but <laughs> we'll get to there. Friday is all qualification matches all day long. Saturday in the morning qualification matches. Saturday afternoon final rounds, and then your team departs. Um, in, in, from the 100,000 foot level, let me point out that um, we expect your team to be gone completely out of the building on Saturday evening. 
Um, you cannot leave anything in the building and expect to come back get it later. I think there's a rock concert being installed the next day or something. I can't remember what it was. Okay. Um, Kurt has asked a question. Kurt, I'm going to unmute you real quick. So be, be forewarned. Uh -huh. Hi, Kurt. Do you have a microphone? No. Yes, you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> you, what was your question? Uh, will the machine shop have a compressor? Yes, the machine shop will have an air compressor. Um, it has a small milling machine. It's a, uh, it's like one of those uh, grizzly uh, uh, mill drills from the Rong Fu company is actually who actually makes it. Um, we have a small lathe. Uh, we have a nice set of, of, of general tools, um, an arc welder. Uh, we have various sanders and cutting tools and those sorts of things. So um, we do have some stuff. Um, Okay, make sense? All right, thanks for the question. So, um, all right, let's talk about what happens for load-in. This is a, always a common question. Um, load-in is Wednesday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., okay? If there is some really valid reason you can't make it that at that point, we really want you to come on Wednesday, by the way. Um, it's just uh, if we get too many people on Thursday, this doesn't work, okay? So let me stress, we really would prefer that you came on Wednesday night. Uh, do whatever you can to make that happen. If you show up on Thursday, you need to be ready to be loading in at 745 and be done by 830, okay? During load-in, safety glasses are mandatory. You won't be allowed into the area without them. Um, very good reason for this. There's teams carrying all sorts of pit decorations and long, skinny, floppy pieces of material. Um, and it is actually almost more dangerous than, um, than than the other three days of the pits. So um, you get to bring with you exactly five people total from the team get to come into the building. Okay, um, please follow the instructions from the on-site staff. Um, please do not plan on just on parking in the loading area. So we need a driver to stay with your vehicle. Um, it does that could be your sixth person if you'd like. Um, but we're really expecting you to drop your stuff off. You're going to do a really minimal amount of inspection, um, and then um, then you're going to leave. You're not going to be there very long. Okay? Please bring a cart. Um, we highly recommend you have a cart with at least three-inch diameter wheels. Uh, we do occasionally have to put down what are called yellow jackets, and these are uh, you'll, you'll have to we be able to wheel your cart over those. They're usually about two, two, two and a half inches in, in uh, height. Um, so my, my team, I always give them five inch wheels. Um, so you need to be big, okay? And your first uh, stop while you're loading in is gonna be robot inspection, um, okay? So um, is that, uh, hopefully that answered everybody's question about what is it that you can do on load in. Um, I, Try to remember if I have another slide for this. Give me one sec. Uh, no, I was smart and I deleted it. Okay, so the only thing that you are going to do on load-in is you're going to bring your things into the pit. You are going to, uh, your things as in tools, supplies, and so forth. You are also going to visit the inspectors. Uh, Darren, you got your, you're unmuted. Um, yes. Tell, tell us about what's going to happen for inspection. Okay. I didn't build a slide, but I'll build a slide for Kevin's posting of this. So um, so I'm sorry for those that don't get to see slides, so you're going to have to write it down. <laughs> there, there's going to be two lines when you pull your robot into the inspection area. One line will be for your robot and your 30-pound withholding. Uh, make sure you weigh your 30-pound and holding before you... Uh, your 30 pound withholding before you sh show up at the at the uh, venue. So what is a 30 pound withholding? It's for fabricated parts only. So if you bring in a if you bring your fabricated parts in and it has let's say three sims on it and two bane bots, and I put it on the scale and it weighs 35 pounds, I am not I'm going to pass you off because when you add up you know, three sims and two bane bots, you're looking at about, I think it runs into it, so you're looking at two, four, six, so you're talking about seven pounds extra, so that puts you around 29 pounds. 
so of fabricated parts. Okay, so Bain bots, motors, sims, um, cylinders, air cylinders, things that you buy off the shelf that you actually can use to re replacement parts, those are not included as part of the 30 pounds. So keep that in mind. It's 30 pounds of fabricated parts. Uh, the other line will be, so you can have two lines. One line is robot and three pound withholding. The other line is for the pit stuff, tools, carts, flooring, floppy stuff, things like that, what Kevin talked about. So make sure you have, as your five students, they'll come in, I'll send them off in one direction for the robot and 30 pound withholding and the other direction for the pits. Um, we'll have pit signs there to kind of get them to where the pits they need to go. Um, again, keep somebody at the car. Um, if there's a, and remember, you only get to bring in one robot, okay? If you bring in your shooter by itself or you bring in a collector by itself, that's fine. But I don't want to see you bring in a drivetrain, okay? Um, we had a couple teams try to bring in drivetrains and say, oh, we're using this for our demonstration. No, you're not going to get that. I'm actually going to make you go take the drivetrain back to your car and take it apart if you want to use it as extra parts. Um, so that's going to take in for the load in. Um, there's going to be a sign, so we're going to look at your plastic bag. If you drive and your plastic bag basically blows up on you um, because you forgot to tie it back against the cab of the truck and so the wind took the entire bag and destroyed it, you need to make sure that you show us that. Don't forget your lockup form. In fact, what I strongly recommend all teams to do right now is get your lockup form and tape it to your robot today or tomorrow or do it like within this week. So tape your lockup form to your robot unless you're going to the Ellensburg Regional um, because, you know, 70%, so there's like 35% of the teams don't show up with their lockup forms. And if you don't show up to your lockup form, guess what? You don't get to open your robot Thursday morning. You have to go through the signature routing to get your robot unlocked. And that takes about a half hour out of your time. Um, so get your lockup forms, get them on your robot, and then you're ready to go. Uh, the other thing is that if you have um, more than, it's, let's say you have an extra student, you have six people there, then that's fine. I expect that your truck is empty then within that total time frame. But again, keep it at five because we have a lot of teams because in our the way our venue runs, if you look for the machine shop is that Kevin's showing you there, we can actually put four cars in there, two to three lines deep, which means we have 12 teams. We could have up to 12 teams actually unloading stuff at one shot. And if you know how that works, you got 64 teams to do. That can turn into quite a cluster. Okay, and uh, uh, Matt Randall is asking, must the coach or mentor who signed the bag and tag be present for the robot check-in? No, they do not. I just need the lockup form there, and I need that uh, because what we're going to do is you're going to come in my line. We're going to look. We're going to ask you as you're coming in, do you have a, any 30-pound withholding? And they say, Yes, I'll say, okay, show it to me, and it's in the palm of their hand. I'm not going to weigh it. I, we're not going to be crazy and weigh every piece that comes through us. We're going to look at your 30-pound, what you're considering your 30-pound withholding, and if it looks like it's under 30 pounds, we're going to let you go. We're going to sign that off. Uh, look at your, do a quick, what they call a visual validation against your lockup form and your, your robot in the plastic bag. Make sure there's no holes or anything in it. And if it's all good, you're going to get a green little piece of paper on it that says, OK to unbag. That means it's OK to unbag the next day, not OK to unbag that night. So um, make sure you understand that. So you, it's a drop and go. Wednesday night is drop and go. Um, OK, yeah, so the, one more. So what that means is that we, we really literally mean you're going to, um, all the stuff that goes to your pits it's going to be taken in and set down, and then you're going to leave. You can't set up your pits on Wednesday. We no really judges it, will walk through. Yeah, <laughs> we we and and we know these things. So yeah, I, everybody tries to cheat on that one. We really, really don't um, want you to do that because we're not we're just not ready for you to do that yet. Okay. All right. 
Um, Michael's asking, is robot in, is inspection on Wednesday or Thursday? Um, the answer is, beside, aside from weigh-in and stuff, the m majority of inspection is on Thursday. No, inspections are on Thursday. Yep. We will start inspections at 10 o'clock. <laughs> is, is it 8.30 or 10? No, that, so, okay, so as a whole, what I want to do is Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. Well, let's wait. I got slides for that. Yeah. Then, okay, then we can correct them as I go. Yeah, we'll okay. talk because we'll talk, I've got a whole list on that, too. So it's all okay. Good. So let's talk about Thursday, otherwise oh, known as Final sure. Build Day. <laughs> um, if your team's anything <laughs> like mine, mine is actually downstairs at the moment trying to get the shooter to work. Um, and uh, I just saw one, just saw Frisbee fly out into my lawn, so that's a good sign. Um, the uh, Thursday... However, your, um, your primary goal for Thursday is for your robot to pass inspection. Um, among, uh, uh, nothing else actually matters because if you get your robot working but you don't pass inspection in time, it's all for naught anyway. So we are, we, you, this point is going to get belabored for the rest of this presentation. I apologize, but I really want to make sure that you are, are, um, are up on how, just how important this is. Um, so you've brought in all of your tools and spare parts uh, on Wednesday. On Thursday, if you were if you were late, we will allow you to come in for a Thursday late load in um, at 7:45. Um, but aside from that, um, what you need to really be thinking about is what is it you need to do to get your robot to be functional. What is it that you can do to get your robot inspected? Um, and you know. Try and prepare yourself for what it is in a nice sequence of events to get yourself through the day. Um, remember that asking for help is a good thing. Um, everybody who's got a lower team number than you has likely been through this before. And so, um, you know, it's a, it is a big badge of honor to help another first team. It's part of the chairman's award. Um, so for crying out loud, if you need help, ask for it, okay? Um, I have no idea why this slide is here, so I'm going to skip to the next one. Okay, the pits open at 8.30 a.m., and um, they don't open at 8.25. <laughs> and no, we won't let you in early because it's cold. Um, it will be at exactly at 8.30. We'll have a nice little countdown, um, and everybody will be allowed in at the same time. Um, you have to wait for us. So if your watch says 8.30, it's not okay for you to go in. There will be people positioned at the doors, so we, um, there you go. You must have safety glasses on your face covering your eyes to enter the pits. Um, we will not provide safety glasses for you. That is up to you. You need to make sure that you have them for everybody on your team. Um, now, there are two um, routes into um, the venue. One is from Occidental. The other one is down the stairs. Um, if your team is carrying what we believe is an unsafe load and you're planning on going down the stairs, we may divert you to an elevator. Please don't argue with them. Uh, we're trying to do our best to make sure that it's safe for everybody. Um, if you have a long load that you're bringing in, a.k.a. you know PVC pipe for your pits or, or a, a long flag or, or something, um, we require you to have two people on it, one at the front and one at the back. Um, and we will pull you out of line if we think that you're headed into the melee with um, with something that doesn't look safe. So um, we, we're, the uh, stairs, especially from the second level, the stairs down, um, can, uh, I, a, a fall would be very treacherous not only to yourself but to a whole lot of people. So we uh, appreciate your, uh, your uh, cooperation there. Um, the next one is, uh, so at 8.30 a.m., uh, starting at 8.30 a.m. on Thursday, we would like your lead mentor, whoever the lead mentor is that day, the most senior person there, we'll call it, um, needs to go visit the PID admin disk starting at about 8.30. Um, you need to bring with you a team roster that was printed from Tim's and any additional handwritten um, consent forms. Um, Consent forms are required for all team members. That includes students and adults. Um, they are not. They, they, it's basically anybody who you would consider on the team and and somebody who's got like going to be in the pits uh, with you. Uh, um, you do not need consent forms 
for visitors on Friday and Saturday if they're going to be mostly in the stands. Okay. Um, all right. So let's talk about who to bring on Thursday. Um, Thursday is a kind of a long day. Um, you will certainly want to bring your core robot builders and your core mentors. Um, and I think that, that that's, you know, we need the people that can drive your robot, that can fix your robot, that can help you pass inspection, um, and the mentors required for that. Now, depending on where you're coming from, and, you know, some teams are traveling as a great big unit, others can break things up. Um, if you've got a, a group of students who aren't really part of that, and who could easily get bored during the day on Thursday, um, you might want to bring them on Friday if that's a possibility. Um, it's really not a spectator day. It's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a long day of logistics and, and inspections and those sorts of things. Now, if you are bringing your kids, they're welcome. We're welcome. We welcome everybody, but it can be a long day for those who aren't actively involved in, with the robot, okay? Um, uh, Win Marie has asked, please clarify, do we need forms for students on the roster? No, you do not. Um, the, uh, the TIMS, the team roster printed from TIMS will list all of the students who have uh, used STEMS to do the online consent form. If you have students who are not on in TIMS, that is the handwritten um, additions. The consent forms uh, I guess my last statement there is a general one that the consent form, which is what happened in STEMS, um, and is needed from them and for adult mentors. So hopefully that made sense. Okay. Um, Gail's asked, um, you would like to have your pit next to a specific team. Um, Gail, I'm going to ask you to email me, kevinro at firstwa.org and um, we'll see how close you actually are. You actually may be pretty close already. Um, otherwise, we'll see what we can do for you, okay? Um, and do we need to bring PVC pipe to hang banners? Uh, Dixie, I'm not exactly sure what that question is. Um, if you would be so kind as to... Um, actually, let me see if you have a microphone. Hi, Dixie. Do you have a microphone? You don't. Um, hey, Kevin. I'll talk yeah. to her. I, Dixie's with uh, one of the rookie teams, um, Ballard High School. I mean, uh, Blanchett High School. Okay. I'll, I'll work with her on that, what, what she needs. I know what she needs. Okay. Um, all right. Um, Dixie, uh, Darren, will, Darren will help you help you out. What is the door size to load in from the, in, from the load in area to the arena pit area. Um, it is a large roll-up uh, garage door. Um, it is this guy right here. I believe it's 15 feet wide. Um, and then we have a couple of smaller ones. I know I'm, if you've been to Seattle before, you know that the robots don't fit through the man doors. Um, so that's why I, I think we're using this door right here, Wes, which is just south of the machine shop. Um, should be plenty of room to get your stuff in and out. That's why we really want you to do this on Wednesday. On Thursday, we will open that door, but we close it at 8.30. Uh, the fire marshal requires those uh, doors to be closed if there's more than a certain number of people in the building. Okay. All right. So uh, let me go back to what else to bring on Thursday. Okay. So, um, again, you'll need to work out whether uh, who it makes sense to bring with you on Thursday versus the, the rest of the time. Um, veteran teams, really would appreciate it um, if you would stock yourselves up with some spare parts. Um, we are starting to get, we're, we're a week five event. We're sort of late in the season. The spare parts, uh, uh, the spare parts kit has been on this truck since um, February. <laughs> it's, this is going to be the fifth event it's done. It's entirely possible that we're out of a lot of good stuff, okay? So if you don't mind, even if you just left it in the car, um, if, you know, motor controllers, sensors, um, if, you, if you had a practice robot that you're not using or whatever and you had like an extra digital sidecar or something, we'd really appreciate if you'd bring that. Um, we're not asking you to give away the expensive stuff, but you've, we may ask you to loan some things, okay? Um, and the, a lot of, the, uh, of our uh, lovely rookie teams are going to need help with programming. We'd love it if you'd be ready to jump in, okay? 
Um, as always, uh, this laptops, uh, please leave your classmates on and laptops on the charger whenever you possibly can. And the uh, and your batteries, just leave them on the chargers. Um, the the battery chargers sometimes lie. Um, it should take like five to six hours to give a lead ad acid battery a decent charge. Um, we've seen some of these chargers claim that the thing's done in an hour. Um, you will be sorely disappointed if you uh, don't leave your batteries on chargers. So, um, and keep an eye on your ba battery voltages. Okay. Um, so what? Uh, so we're still talking about Thursday. This was just some ancillary stuff. Let's talk about the the key details. Uh, the machine shop opens at 8:30 a.m. Um, it'll be staffed this year by uh, uh, Pat uh, O'Dowd from and probably Chris O'Dowd from Xbot. Um, they are excellent. Um, they are excellent machinists for us. Um, they uh, have a lot of experience uh, at building stuff and are just pretty crafty guys. So we're really excited about that. Um, uh, Paul Rausch will also be in the house, um, and we should have a welder on site. Um, remember that these are volunteers. Um, they are, they'll do anything they can to help you. However, there are some rules. Please don't just jump into the machine shop and go use a machine. Um, we have insurance reasons for this, and just to prevent mayhem, um, we only allow our machine shop volunteers to use the machines. Um, there are limits on what they can do for you. If you're walking in and asking them to do something that's going to take six or seven hours, uh, they're likely to say no, right? Or even something that's going to take more than the, just a couple of hours. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll try and help you come up with, with uh, what you need, but, um, yeah, you can't expect them to spend their entire day with just your team. We have a TIG welder. Um, you'll need to go to the machine shop to get um, access to it. Um, we have a welder, a, a person welder, and so they will take care of it for you. Um, there are request forms. Sometimes you have to uh, leave your stuff there, so drawings and measurements are really, really important. Um, or, you know, bring whatever you think is necessary in order to convey uh, the information that they'll need to help you out. Um, the machine shop will not loan you any of their tools, so please don't bother asking. Um, you'll just be disappointed. Um, there's usually a, a short line there. Uh, sometimes it's a long line. And if you're just standing in line to borrow a tool, I'll save you the effort. They're going to say, no, I'm sorry, we can't. Okay? If you need to borrow tools, try and find tools from the people around you. Hey, that was a long slide. Um, are there any limits on what power tools you can have in your pit? We, um, Win Marie is thinking about bringing a small benchtop drill press. Uh, the answer is no asterisk. <laughs> Um, we, you may not weld in your pit. Um, we would prefer, well, well, actually, we don't want you using things that generate heat. Um, so if you've got an angle grinder or in something like that, we also don't want things that generate too much, um, uh, well, that generate dust or generate too many chips. So d uh, don't plan on bringing your own mount miter saw. Uh, power miter saws are not a no-no in the pits. Um, um, and be be you know be aware of the fact that you've got a um, a, a 10 amp allocation of power. Um, sometimes you can get away with 20 for a little while, but you know the people around you are also using the power. So uh, if you if you bring in a big machine, it's going to short out. Um, aside from that, we're pretty easy about it. Use common sense. If you've got uh, if you've got a tool that's throwing chips around, no, um, please don't. Okay. Yeah, one of the things I want to add, Kevin. Yeah. Um, we're really encouraging teams not to bring compressors, period. Oh, Pancake yes. Or anything. I know that they're nice to have for great cleanup and stuff, but um, there's too many other teams out there that they've had some issues with, and FIRST has kind of really hit the, hit up, hit the inspectors pretty hard about making sure teams don't bring in any compressors at all. If you need to do any type of... Um, compressor work, the machine shop will have a compressor, so if you, you can have them do the work for you. Yep. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, okay, so um, other things. Boy, where are all my... Oh, actually, I got planned even inspection slides coming up. Okay. Um, I want, just want to point out some of our key volunteers. Um, we, have, we have the 
some of the best um, we have some of the best volunteers in the country. There's no doubt about it. Um, most of the most of the hardcore people from Washington State end up at World Championships um, as as um, inspectors, referees, judge advisors, announcers. So we, we're actually quite good um, with this. Uh, we, we have a quite a good setup here. Um, but there are some key things you need to realize. Um, if you have any questions about the game and you want to get advice about the game from somebody official, you have to talk to a referee. You can't talk to an inspector about the game. You can't talk to me about the game. I mean, I'll tell you my opinion, and I'll tell you you better ask a referee, but if it's something that you're going to rely on, you've got to ask a referee. If you have any technical questions, you go to the inspectors. If you're trying to get a ruling about whether something's legal or not, whether if you're, or, you know, oftentimes you, just if you can't figure something out, uh, the inspectors are usually pretty experienced mentors, um, and they will uh, uh, have some great ideas on how to take care of you, okay? Um, and we also have uh, field supervisors, and our field supervisors, um, um, they are, uh, again, the, the best supervisors in the country in, as far as I'm concerned, um, and so they will help you a great deal with anything that's in or around the field, okay? So our field supervisors um, are Brogan Thompson, uh, uh, Ron Baker, and there's another guy named Pat Severson. I don't have Pat's picture, um, but they've, uh, they, these are three really experienced guys. They'll do anything they can to help you out. If you have any questions about what's going on around the field or what you're supposed to be doing or where you're supposed to be, um, these, these are really, really great guys. Um, our head referee is David Martucci. Um, David's been doing this a long time. Um, he's, uh, uh, he's a great guy. He'll um, do whatever he can to answer any questions that you have um, about the game. Darren G, he's our lead robot inspector, and you've been hearing his voice already. Um, and he uh, uh, and his staff of crack robot inspectors are really well known for doing an outstanding job. So um, we're very, very lucky to have them. Okay. So um, normally I do this without Darren, so but I'm going to let him jump in whenever he wants to. The next, uh, the next several slides are all about inspections, um, and so let's talk about it. Um, there's sort of four major steps to getting inspected. Um, we're going to size your robot and weigh it, and that's done at the inspection station. Um, and if you'll remember, I was telling you earlier, inspection is actually, um, there's load-in inspection, which will happen out on the machine, sh in the load-in dock. Um, when you show up on in the morning, we'll end up moving most of that equipment over here um, to this inspection area. Um, this, so the inspection area is over by the practice fields. Okay, um, we're going to uh, um, weigh in size. Um, there's we're going to check out your control system, and so we have control system advisors. Um, we have three really good ones for Seattle, so we're excited about that. Um, and then there's going to be a physical robot inspection in your pit starting around 10 a.m. And then the other part of inspection is we really have to get you to connect to the field at least once, okay? Key thing for you to realize, we are not here to be the heavies. The inspectors are actually here to help you. Um, they, re we really want your robot out on the field. We're not trying to throw up any sort of roadblocks, but we're trying to make sure that you follow the rules to the letter and that your robot is safe. And that is um, their primary goal in life. They will do everything in their power to help you pass inspection with the one exception of ignoring the rules. <laughs> but aside from that, they are really, really good and really inventive. Most of them are engineers, um, and they will do everything they can to, to get you out there. Okay? Um, you want to add anything to this slide, Darren? Yes. Okay, so size and weight. Let me help you guys, everybody, right now. The weight is 120 pounds without your bumpers and without your battery. If you have a very light robot and you just want to weigh it with the bumpers on, then we'll weigh it with the bumpers on, but make sure that you are under 121 pounds. <laughs> so, there anyways, you go. Um, other thing is, is that the CSA station and will also contain the CSAs will also be doing the software verification and validation there. So during your sizing, when you come over and do your size and weight, you will need to bring your control station with you 
because the CSA station and this and the way we're doing it this year is that we'll do both your WPA. You'll have to get your WPA set up, which means that the WPA setup is done on your router, that little white box that's the Rev B version. And you'll bring that over with your, and so it'll basically be on your robot. So when you go from sizing, then you go wait, and then you go to the right to the uh, WPA station, you'll get all that done. Um, keep in mind, and I need all the teams to make sure this, who have extensions going um, horizontally on their robot. You cannot be any bigger than 54 inches, including your bumpers. So if you have a horizontal arm going out, 54, in, or, you know, so many inches, it cannot exceed 54 inches from bumper to that arm. I'm actually going to have a circle on the ground, and it's going to be a 54-inch diameter circle. So if you want to see if your robot fits in it, put a 54-inch diameter circle on the ground, extend out that arm or whatever you have going out vertically. I'm sorry, horizontally. Boy, I'm not thinking right at all. Horizontally, I'm sorry. It's horizontally, and then measure that, and that's what you're going to have to stay in is that 54 inches. Okay, so a um, couple of questions. Um, to clarify, Jason, um, your robot with, without its battery and without its bumpers needs to weigh less than 120 pounds. Actually, 120 pounds or less. Or, or less, yes. And, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that, that, that's – I'll stop there. That's as clear as I can make it. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, and when Marie, um, the the bill of materials. Uh, this is a good question. What do we do with bill of materials? Bill of materials. You will have to show me a copy. If you want to show me a copy of your bill of materials on your computer, that's fine. Um, a hard copy makes it easier, so you're not having to hold the computer in front of me while I do a quick verification validation of the various parts I'm going to look for on your robot as I look at the bill. Okay, so. Um, um, the sign up, um, the sign up for inspections will be done at. You, somebody needs to go over to the inspection desk. There will be a sign up that you once you've done size and weight, you'll be able to sign up for an appointment for an inspector to come over to you. Or do okay. the inspection and then come over and do size and weight. Yeah, Easier. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, I guess, yeah. Let me let me restate that. <laughs> you can come sign up starting at eight thirty. How's that? Um, but you will not get inspectors into your pits until 10, until after 10, because all the inspectors are going to be walking around, kind of seeing where the, the weak robots are, because I want them to have that time to look for the people who need help and stuff, so that we know to get those teams that need help, help right away. Okay. If you've <laughs> here, uh, so here's some good tips for you. Number one, it is extraordinarily rare for a robot to pass inspection on the first attempt. Um, even for those of us who have had really low team numbers, we've been doing this for years, there's always something. And so um, don't, don't plan on the fact that you believe your robot's ready to go and you can put this off, okay? Please get yourself inspected early. Even if you're not fully functional, um, you really want to get the inspections process started so we can tell you whether there are things that you need to change, okay? Because some of this stuff can take a long time to fix. Um, and you want to know that just as soon as possible, okay? Um, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on this again later, but um, and it really is important that we get you to connect to the field as part of inspection. Um, now, the really critical one is even if your robot doesn't run, if you pass inspection, you can still earn qualifying points by sending a human player out. However, if your robot has not passed inspection, you will not earn any qualifying points, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is get your robot inspected. If you can pass inspection, even if the thing doesn't work, <laughs> which is fine, a lot of them won't on Thursday, if you are inspected on Friday, even if your robot isn't functional yet, you, um, you still have an opportunity to earn qualifying points out on the field. I hope that made sense. Um, okay. Can, um, so at some point during the day, um, well, actually, starting at 10 o'clock, um, you'll have three opportunities, uh, scheduled opportunities to go out and practice on the field. 
Okay, if you do that and you go out and successfully connect to the field, the, our computer system will remember that you've done that, and that is part of your inspection process. So if you have already run a practice match um, and connected the field successfully, that satisfies this requirement. If you're not able to make a practice match, at some point in the late afternoon, we're actually going to come grab you, and we're going to take your robot in whatever shape it's in, and we're going to take you over to the field and get you to connect to the field. Okay? And this is really important because even if you get your robot uh, completely done and inspected right at the last instant on Thursday, um, we, if we um, really want you to connect to this thing so that we know that your uh, software works. Okay? Um, a lot of the stuff that to fix connection issues is easy, but they take time to fix, and we won't have time to be helping you out uh, on, on Friday morning. Okay, so you will uh, see my happy, shiny face coming and holding your hand and taking you literally, I don't care how many parts your robot is in, we will pack it all up and drag it over to the field and connect it up, okay? So a little fair warning on that one. Let's see, what else do we know? Um, so if you'll remember, those were sort of the four steps for, uh, for uh, inspections, right? You're going to size and weigh in. We're going to inspect your control system. This includes setting up your WPA key. That, that's the security key on your radio. There's going to be physical inspection, and then we're going to get you connected to the field. All has to happen Thursday. It's a, it makes it a long day, okay? Um, um, practice rounds will also run on Thursday. Um, usually about 9.30, we also have a driver's meeting, and you'll, be, you'll end up going out on the field with the, driver, with the uh, referees. Uh, Darren is usually out there, um, and they'll, they'll go over last-minute uh, rule changes that we've learned. Um, they'll walk you through how to get on and off the field, um, and then you'll be able to run practice rounds. We really would appreciate it if your team could at least get one practice round in. We really want you to be able to walk through the process of getting on and off the field and sort of see how it goes. Practice rounds usually last around 10 minutes. Um, you know, we try and run them like a real round, but the reality is, you know, teams are tinkering with stuff and, you know, usually modifying their software or whatever. But we will try and run a game in there, okay? Um, if it's the case that, um, if it's the case that you, uh, you, oh, and you do not have to pass inspection to run a practice match. So if you've got just a few pesky little things that you need to get taken care of, you can run out and do it. Um, if, you're, um, if you're ready to run and would like to go out and do more practice matches, you can get in the first come, first serve line and we'll let you fill in for teams that didn't make it out there. Okay, the lead cure will have the list for that. Um, we will always give priority to the teams who are scheduled, and we will always give priority to the teams who have not been on the field at least once. So please be gracious and professional. You, we are going to bump you at least once if you're one of the teams that just sits out there and practices all afternoon. Okay? All right. Um, boy, I know I'm going to belabor, sound like I'm belaboring this, but I really need to. Um, if you haven't started inspections by, say, 3 o'clock on Thursday, you're making an enormous mistake, um, really a big one. And so please get yourself on the schedule way before 3. Uh, the morning is much more preferable, but if you've gone past 3, um, we will come and visit you. <laughs> but um, the reality is that um, you're in trouble, um, okay? Don't be bashful about asking for help, especially from the inspectors or the, the people uh, around you. We've all done this before. Um, we understand, okay? The inspections are done at 7.45 p.m. on Thursday. Um, inspections take time. Don't expect to jump in line at 7 and make it happen. It just, it just isn't going to work. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the last part of Thursday. The pits close at 7.45. You need to be out of the building at 8 because the building's closed at 8. The EMT goes home, the building security starts to take over. Uh, our volunteers, who have all been there since 6 a.m., really would like to go home and sleep. So um, we will actually start forcing you out of the building about 7.45, 7.50.
And there are no exceptions to that. Once, honestly, as soon as we get everybody out of there, we actually do the same thing to the volunteers. Um, I try to get out of there by 8.30. The event staff wants to go home, right? So um, please be uh, uh, cognizant of that, all right? Then go home and go to sleep because uh, Friday, <laughs> Friday is just as long. Um, this presentation could go on for like the next six hours to tell you what's going to happen on Friday and Saturday. Um, we will explain most of it to you. You'll get a feel for it on Friday, um, and but I, I think that this is probably a reasonable point to stop. So hopefully you've seen uh, in our presentation uh, how to load in, how to arrive, uh, where the food and logistics and those sorts of things are. Uh, hopefully you've got a good feel for um, the parking situation um, and um, how we're going to be uh, sort of what the field sort of looks like in the pits. Um, and then uh, what you need to accomplish on Thursday, okay? Um, Darren is asking, we have a question for Darren. If our team plans to change a major mechanism on the robot on Thursday, is it advisable to start inspection with the current robot and then make changes after the first inspection? Okay, so here's what you do. And, and this is, this is kind of, it's a great segue in what, segue what I get into, is that if your major piece is not installed on your robot by 2 o'clock, then finish your inspection, we'll disable the part, we'll consider it disabled, and then we'll inspect that final part when you're done maybe the next day. But what that does is you finished inspection, and all we're doing is going to reinspect that part that has been disabled. And kind of my next thing I was going to actually talk to teams about was, at 4 o'clock, I'm going to start going around and I'm going to start saying to every team that doesn't has not finished inspection, I want you to dis disable the part you're working on and finish your inspections because that way you at least get through inspections and then the disabled part is the only thing that needs to be fixed. Okay, so if you're having a pneumatic issue because you're trying to get it to lift, you know, lift from the bottom bar, or you get, you've got your main um, pneumatic issue pneumatic um, system is not working right because your software isn't working right, we'll disable the pneumatics or dis disable your, uh, your cylinders and then we'll finish your inspections and then we'll just re-inspect just those areas that you're trying to get to work. Um, because the key is to be through your inspections before five so that you can at least get on the field, get connected and at least run a practice round a couple of hours or so and then that'll help you as a team find out where you maybe some weak spots is because you know Thursday is the final build season. Okay, so um, now I, I also would be remiss if I didn't uh, open this in a new window and show you um, there is a document that is the public agenda for this event and I'm sorry I, I, I'm, I'm about to show you guys uh, uh, links to all of this in just a in just a sec as I have to fix one thing and then I will turn it loose for you guys to download things. But anyway, um, this is the public agenda. This is off of the FRC website. And um, um, on Friday, um, on Friday, um, pits open at 8 a.m. and the opening ceremonies are at 8.30. So there isn't a whole lot of time uh, uh, so we need you to kind of come in, get your stuff, stuff sort of set up. Um, if you're in one of the first matches, you will find out what the match schedule is on Thursday night. Um, but we're going to uh, uh, we're going to have you do um, be in the in the stands for opening ceremonies. Um, and then if you're in one of the first few matches, you start at nine o'clock. Qualifications match matches run till noon. We have noon to one o'clock lunch. And then we're going to run uh, from about 1 to about 5.45 with qualification matches, uh, immediately followed by the award ceremony. On Friday, the pits in the machine shop are going to close at 7 p.m., which really means 6.45 to you and me, okay? The, um, on Saturday, we have a very similar schedule. Um, the, uh, again, we open just like we did on, on Thursday um, at, at 8 a.m., and um, the... Uh, I apologize, I'm working on something in the background if I keep starting and stopping. The, um, 
uh, opening ceremonies at 830 from nine till about 1215 is, uh, when we have qualification matches. And these times, th these times vary, uh, wildly, by the way. Um, at, uh, we do alliance selections around 1215 to 1230. We have a 1230 to 130 lunch. And then we run the final rounds from 130 to 430. This is usually actually pretty accurate, plus or minus about 10 minutes. Um, then the award ceremony, um, and then we pack it up and go home. Okay. Um, if uh, what we're kind of hoping is that if you are um, if you are done <laughs> starting at about 1:30, um, uh, you can go ahead and start packing up your. Uh, um, you can go ahead and start packing up your uh, uh, pits and stuff, and and we will have a loadout thing happening. So you'll be able to do the inverse of load in starting at about eh, about one thirty on on Saturday. Um, if you if your team is done for the day, and quite frankly, two two thirds of you will be, um, uh, it's a great time to get a few people that are able to help you be organized in in packing everything up, send everybody else out to watch the final rounds, get yourself packed up, um, take your stuff out into the East Hall, then go get your car to bring it in around, and then uh, uh, put stuff away, and then come back in and watch the final awards in the award ceremony. Please, please, please plan on coming to the award ceremony. Every year, and I swear to God, it's always the Gracious Professionalism Award. It just seems like it. Every year, <laughs> there's a team who left because they didn't make it to the finals, they leave and they didn't, they don't get their award. And it just, it's really kind of a, it's a very awkward moment for us. I'll, let's just put it that way. We're standing down there trying to give your team an award that they deserved and um, it turns out you guys went home. Uh, so try not to, I'd appreciate if you didn't do that to us. It's, it's sort of a, it makes for an awkward moment, okay? Um, all right, so any other um Let's see. Somebody has asked, can we bring in sh bring a shop vac? Yes, you may bring a shop vac. We would appreciate it, actually, to, to keep things cleaned up in your pits. Uh, Somebody is asking, how many batteries and chargers should we bring for Friday and Saturday? Um, I would, uh, you know, it sort of depends on your particular robot. Um, the, uh, um, you get 10 amps. Um, you know, you can charge, most teams end up charging like two or three batteries at a time. Um, I know that some teams have these just beautiful battery charger carts that can charge like they got like 12 battery chargers on there. The problem is that you can't actually plug those in because we don't have that. Um, um, we don't really have that uh, ability because uh, we don't have that much power for you. Okay. Um, the practice rounds stop at 5 p.m. Uh, usually between 4:30 and 5 p.m. on Thursday. Um, and um, they are um, they are scheduled, or you can be in the fill-in line. And in case you hadn't noticed or realized, I'm answering a, a big long stream of questions I have in the question box. Um, if you are wondering where these slides are, oops, I need to update this because I've been typing in it. Well, okay. Um, if you go to firstwa.org and you go to FRC webinars, FRC all the way down here at the bottom, webinars. You can come down here to Seattle Team Briefing. That'll get you to this page. The slides I just showed you are right here. The public agenda I just showed you is right here. Um, the directions for uh, ordering food from Schwartz Brothers um, are here. Um, I will get the order form for Seattle Sports Service in the next day or two. That will be here. Um, and I think that should cover most of the public stuff that we have for you. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about what is supposed to happen on, um, well, on any of these days, actually? Let's see if anybody's got their hand up. I don't see anybody. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, well, with that, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is um, we'll, we'll call that a wrap, and I will hang out here and a answer any questions that anybody might have. Um, aside from that, we're going to have a great event. We always do in Seattle. It's well known as uh, one of the best venues in the country, and we're really excited about that. A lot of that has to do with the volunteers and, of course, the attitudes of everybody who attend. And so um, we're hoping it will be a big part of that. 
So thank you all for attending. Thank you, Darren, for chiming in.